Child labor is widely regarded as bad. But for at least one animal, it's a fundamental way of life where if they didn't treat their kids like literal tools, the very foundation of their society would crumble. I'm talking about a type of insect whose society not only depends on throwing their children headfirst into the workforce, but milking their own version of cattle, sewing together their homes, and spraying acid. And it's what I'm hoping to find here today in Southeast Asia. Alrighty guys, we're here at a farm here in the Philippines where we've been invited to do my absolute favorite thing, look for some animals. But there's a very specific type here that I want to find, that being a weaver ant. These ants you're not gonna find in an ant hill on the ground. They actually don't have one at all, but instead build their nests up in trees. And the way they construct these nests is one of the weirdest things in the natural world. And they have such a bizarre and advanced society that I'm really hoping to film these ants and show you all the inner workings of it. So we're gonna go through this farm and hopefully find this industrious little insect. A farm is one of the best places to look for weaver ant nests. Most insects are pests for anyone trying to grow produce, but these ants are among the most important animals for agriculture in Asia and are kept here on purpose. And to find out why, I'm going to need to find some. And luckily, on this calabash tree, I found exactly what I was looking for. We have finally found what we are looking for. Way up in this tree is a bizarre collection of leaves. This is an old weaver ant nest. and. Good thing it's old because if I were to put my hand on an active one, I would be sprayed with acid, which is not fun. But as you can see, it's covered with a bunch of dead leaves, and so when these leaves die, the ants abandon it. But it's what is connecting all these leaves that is truly fascinating and lets these ants deserve their own video. This white material is actually silk, and it's produced by their larva. And the whole process of how that happens is so bizarre so we are going to scan around this tree and look for an active weaver ant nest to show you this bizarre behavior in action. As the leaves of their nest die or are blown apart by storms, the ants make new ones elsewhere on the same or surrounding trees. And as I look through the undergrowth, I finally find the architects of these structures. Asiatic weaver ants. And by following their path along the branches, they led me to exactly what I wanted to find. All right, we have not found one, but many great examples of what I wanted to show you guys. This right here, right there, a couple over there, these are all active weaver ant nests, and they are packed full of hundreds of these ants. And these are a very defensive species. If I just tap their little leaf home, they swarm out and go to defend it. This behavior is why they're actually so important for farmers. A lot of them are actually ditching pesticides completely because these ants will so viciously defend the tree they live on that any leaf-eating insects are completely consumed and used for food or at the very least driven away. And the crops, the fruits from these trees are on average so much healthier, so much bigger than normal that uh, yeah, lots of farmers are turning to the ant pesticide solution, an El Natural way of doing it. So the reason why I wanted to film these ants and why they're so fascinating to me is actually how they build these nests. So these are constructed of leaves, of course, and how their, their function really is to house the colony much as an ant mound would. So there's different chambers holding the eggs, the larva, the queen is in one of these, and she's actually bright green. So, you know, as cool as it would be to tear all these open to try and find her, it wouldn't be very ethical. And it would be extremely painful because these ants squirt out formic acid at their enemies. They don't actually have venom, but if you do mess with their tree, they will bite you and spray that wound with acid, making it hurt an extra amount. So we aren't gonna do that. But back on track, how they create these is they will recruit a bunch of ants to actually pull some of these leaves together. They'll make a little bridge out of themselves. But how they will seal, oh my gosh, look at all of them come out there. I gotta be careful about touching that tree. So how they seal it together is they will actually grab larvae out of their nest, pick them up in their little mandibles, and use them as living glue guns. They will stimulate the larva to just spray down the leaf, hose it down with that silk. And a, they use a bunch of it because these leaves are absolutely covered in it. So they go through bunches and bunches of larva, layers and layers of these leaves until they form these perfect little areas that are actually watertight. So if it rains here, it's still not gonna disturb the colony. 
Now these ants are such a dominant organism that very few things can live on these trees. An exception to that are actually scale insects, these little bugs that feed on the sap of these trees and they exude a little blob of sweet liquid from their butts called honeydew and the ants will actually farm these insects and use that honeydew to supplement their diet. So not only are they farming, they're incurring child labor, they are I, I don't know what else they do, but just the fact these ants have a, si a society that advanced and that weird truly fascinates me. These ants truly have everything made for themselves, and they're such a powerful presence here in these forests. But there's an animal that absolutely plays them and makes a fool out of them, because one of the ants in this vast colony is actually an imposter, a type of spider that so perfectly mimics one of these ants that it can infiltrate their colony and act as one of their own. And we'll be covering that in the next video.